Good morning, everyone. This morning, <laughs> our story comes to us from Hosea. <laughs> I'm not going to do justice to it this morning because I'm going to keep it very brief this morning because I have limited time. But I want you to get a gist that a different types of shame in the Bible and that whatever level and category your life find itself, it's often time we find ourselves in some sticky situation. And we find ourselves in some situation which we question God. And sometimes we did not listen. Some people um will tell you that I shouldn't have married this person for different reason. But let's read into the story and hear what it says. The beginning of the word of God in Aziah 1 verse 2. And I'm reading from a Hebrew. I had to go back and look at the Hebrew translation of this passage to make sure I get it right because I had my own big take on the story and different authors have their own take on the story. And I'm glad my take was far fetched from my, as I translate through the text ye yesterday. At the beginning of the word of Yahweh by Hosea and said to Hosea, instead of transliteration, so some of my word might sound off, go take unto thee a wife of whoredom and children of whoredom. So it's a wife and children of whoredom. Okay. For the land had committed great whoredom. So that would suggest that the children possibly were or what we some people would call not cut to fit or jacket. It says, wife of whoredom and children of whoredom. And great whoredom. From so he went and took Goma, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. And Yahweh said unto him, Call his name Yisrael, um, Jezreel, which is shown Yisrael in the Hebrew um, um, translation, Yisrael, which is Jezreel in English. For yet a little, and I will avenge the blood upon the house and will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Yisrael. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow in Israel in the valley, and she conceived again and bare a daughter. And Yahweh said unto him, Call her name Laruchama. And you'll see in your Bible, Laruchama. But in the, the calf is Laruchama. Because I'm reading it from the translated Hebrew, transliterated and English combination. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of his Israel. But I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Yehuah, which is Judah, and will save them by Yahweh, their Elohim, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle. So we see two different names for God there in use. By horses, nor by horsemen. And time doesn't permit me to go very far. Now when she was weaned, Laurel Hama, she conceived and bare a son. Then she said, Yeah, then said Yahweh, call his name Lohami. And for you are not my people, and I will not be your Elohim. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto me, Ye are not my people, it shall be said unto him, Ye are the sons of the living. Then shall the children and the children of Israel be gathered together and children and appoint themselves one head and they shall come up out of the land. Great shall be the day of Israel. All right. So that's more the English and the transliteration version of my text. So we see this, the text, we, um, so we see that the, 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 the marriage of um they had an unlikely marriage. The husband was faithful to God in all he did. The wife was an adulteress. God told the man to marry her, even though she lived in sin. In faith, he listened to God. This is a story of Hosea Gomar, a story about unending love. We find a story about unending grace in a, in a marriage and a life of disgrace and shame. Can you imagine what would have happened if a pastor just outright go and marry a prostitute? Hosea Gomar's marriage wasn't easy. 
Goma became dissatisfied and the promiscuous that captivated Goma before marrying Ozir consumed her even more afterward. Ozir reacted as anyone would. He was hurt, yet because of his relationship with the Lord, Ozir dealt tenderly with his wife. He pursued Goma in the midst of her sin, saying, you are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man. And I will behave the same way towards you, Ozir 3 verse 3. In the same way that Ozir showed grace to his wife, God shows grace to us. God loves us in spite of our sin. He lo his love never fails and he will never change. Jose and Goma's relationship is a beautiful metaphor of God's relationship with his people. Although God was hurt by Israel's sin, they were still his people. God said to Israel, I will show my love to the one I called, not my loved one. I will say to those who call not my people, you are my people. I think we cannot understand this. First, God is saying, you are not my people. And in chapter two, he comes back to say, you are my people. Like Goma, we struggle to let go of our sin. Even when we have so much love to receive, we seek fulfillment elsewhere, and we often choose a life of shame. Some people, we just can't seem to let go of the past of the shame. When we experience feelings of guilt or unworthiness, we can remember the promises of God. If you've been running from God, remember this. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. And so, as we look at Lorahama, and we look at the, the, the passage that God told Ozia to live a life of shame, to choose a life of shame. Can you imagine the, the, the face of the people? Now, in the Hebrew, remember, they use names that have meaning. So when he chose the first child, you know, you can imagine what they were saying. And then when he chose the second name, you are not my people. Can you imagine what there was? Um, and the, the second child was no mercy or no compassion. Can you imagine what they were saying? Why would he choose? What is she doing to him? See, the prophet going to choose a prostitute and you see what's happening? Now the child's name. And then when he got to the one about not my people, oh my God, can you imagine how talks were wagging? The prophet, the man of God, living a life of shame. And as with every other situation with shame, People never see their own baggage in their backyard that's overpiling. So they were they were busy looking at Ozzy, and I could see Ozzy say to them, yes, I've chosen those names because you have been unfaithful to God. Because God is saying you are the, or, the, the warring child. And when the church of God looks like a prostitute, it's a bad situation. Nowadays, when you look in the house of God, there's no demarcation. We say, oh, God is a God of love. You know, don't be judgmental. Don't judge your brothers and sisters. There is no standard. So if you feel that, Hussein's story is far-fetched. Just look at our lives. Look at ourselves. Look at how we behave as a people of God. We shack up. We, 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 we live some lifestyle that is so far from God. We, we, we become infidel in the house of God. I mean, the people of God were married outright cheating. No reservation. And we're calling ourselves the people of God. No standards as God doesn't exist. And we take, we trample on God's unending love and grace. Can you imagine when the nations around were looking at the people? They knew everything about God and what he did for his people. And when God's people start to behave a particular way like them, no wonder they weren't even bothered to be grafted in Israel. Israel was more grafting into them. Let us be careful how we live our lives as God people. But if you find yourself wandering away from God or feeling ashamed because of your past, because you were a woman of the night, or you have been living in a red light district. God reminds us in chapter two that your shame will be no more. That even though you were not my people by your behavior, he wants you to be his people. And like Hosea, God is chasing after you. He's going to buy you back to himself in spite of your life of shame. You don't have to hang on to it and keep going out into a life of shame. Even if your children and your behavior doesn't look like him, he wants to make you his people this morning. Have a blessed day. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive us, Lord, where we, like Goma, keep wandering away from you. And after the lustful things of the world, we're to the point, God, where we become valueless. But even when no one else wants to buy us, Lord, you will buy us back. And thank you for that, Lord. Help us not to take that for granted. In Jesus' name, pour your spirit upon us and be with us as we go out and come in, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day. Bless, bless.